Greetings YouTubers. This is Alan B. Me. And I want to do a video response to not your typical Negro's video on biblical illiteracy. My response is that what we need in the church is not more biblical literacy or more biblical scholarship. To the contrary, I see that biblical scholarship, biblical literacy is perhaps at the root of most of the problems that we have. I believe what we need more than biblical scholarship is more attention to what the Spirit of God is saying to us individually and collectively. We need more of the rhema of God rather than the written word. The written word certainly is important. The written word certainly is essential. The written word is certainly inspired by God. The written word, according to Paul, is all we need. Paul says in 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17 that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. My contention is not that we throw away the scripture, but that we learn to listen to the Spirit, to hear what God is trying to say to us individually, to listen to see where the Spirit is directing us, to get the rhema of the Word rather than just the mental, uh, the intellectual, um, knowledge from the Word. It is thought that there are over 38,000 different denominations in the world. Each of these denominations, each of these groups of believers get their doctrine from Scripture. You have some groups who believe in once saved, always saved, and they can back it up with Scripture. Other groups who don't believe that can also back it up with Scripture. You have Sabbath keepers who believe that you should worship on Saturday. You have some Sabbath keepers who believe that no, the Sabbath begins at sundown on Friday and ends at sundown on Saturday. Your worship should begin on sundown Friday. You have those who believe in musical instruments in church. Others say no, no instruments in church. Some denominations allow women to preach. Others have women not only not preach but they have to have their head cover. You have some groups who um, are ecumenical. They believe in sh having communion with any people who call themselves believers. You have groups like the Catholics who believe that their rituals um, you know, are only to those who are Catholics. You have different beliefs about end times, eschatology. You have Millennialists, premillennialists, amillennialists. You have those who are preterists. You have those who uh, believe that uh, Jesus is coming back physically to rule and reign on this earth. You have those who believe that it's a spiritual kingdom that's going to be set up. As I said, all these groups back up their beliefs with scripture. They can't all be right. It says that if we go back to Scripture, if we study the Scripture, we will come close to what true Christianity should be. But is that even possible? Is that even a worthy goal? Are we close to what they taught in the first century? I don't think so. In the first century, he had those who believed that the Jesus was coming back pretty soon. In fact, many of them believed that his coming back happened when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD and the Jews were scattered all over the world. You have those who did not believe in the Trinity. Arianism was pretty widespread up until uh, the Council of Nicaea when it was pretty much put to the end. Though you have groups today that are still Arian. Jehovah's Witnesses one. You had those who believed in universal salvation. You had those who disagree about what the nature of God was. You still have a disagreement between the Orthodox and the Catholic Church. All these different groups get their doctrine from Scripture. 
Mostly what is taught in the Protestant church today is really just warmed over, rehashed Catholic doctrine. While we don't believe in the Pope, we replace the Pope with so-called doctors of theology. People who are writing these books, who have these websites and uh, television shows that are telling us what to believe. We replace the Pope with our pastor. Uh, what's needed is for us to hear what thus say the Lord to us. What does he mean by this scripture? Is it important for me to know about the Trinity right now? Is it important for me to understand the deep things about end times eschatology? Should I, should I be worried about if the earth was created in seven literal days or was it ages? What I want to do is offer what I'm going to call my Alan B. Me $5 challenge. And this is for the Bible scholars, those who are Bible literate. And I want to see if anyone can prove from Scripture or disprove from Scripture to my satisfaction the doctrine of once saved, always saved. I picked that one because you can pretty much split the Christian church in two uh, with this one particular doctrine. Uh, I have no vested interest one way or another but our interest is to see what the true biblical scholars can give me about this particular topic. And to the person who can convince me, once again, I'll give this $5 bill. I can't really spare this $5 bill, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to let one of my friends hold it for a while and make sure I don't spend it. So it'll be available, so I'm going to give this contest one week. And on the 18th, of January uh, if I get any replies and judging by my past video history there may not be too many but if I get a reply then the person who convinces me one way or the other will get a crisp five dollar bill